Hey folks, Mr. MathBlog here, and this uh, lesson is more on comparing fractions. This is going to be lesson 6.7, so our common core is to uh, strand is to extend our understanding of fraction equivalence and ordering. And then so our essential question is how can uh, we compare fractions? I'm going to show you a few different ways we can compare fractions. Okay, one with uh, denominators, one with numerators, and then one by uh, doing a benchmark that we did uh, prior. So let's go ahead and uh, start this lesson. So, so um, uh, what steps can you use to find a common denominator for two-thirds and one-fifth? Okay, so I'm looking at the common denominators, the bottom numbers right here. All right, you remember a few lessons ago we folded some pieces of paper together? So we would have folded, since this is in thirds, we would have folded uh, in one direction. Uh, so there's three equal pieces. And then folded the other piece of paper in the other direction. So there was five equal pieces right here. And then when we blend these two together, it makes uh, 15 equal pieces right there. And they're all equal sizes. So, so our common denominator would be 15. Okay, another way is, is this, you guys. A lot of times we're not going to have paper to fold all the time. So, so you can start listing multiples of each denominator. Multiples of 3 or 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18. I can just keep adding 3, adding 3, adding 3. Multiples of 5, there's 5 times 1, 5 times 2, 5 times 3, 5 times 4. Or I can just go plus 5, plus 5. Okay, the common multiple is 15, so a common denominator would be 15. Okay, either way is fine with that. Let's try a problem here. So every year, Mrs. Bullock's class has a contest. This year, 3 eighths of the contest will be, on, will be on the blacktop, and 1 fourth of the contest will be in the field. Were there more contests on the blacktop or in the field? So here we're trying to compare which is bigger, 3 eighths or 1 fourth right here, okay? So what we're going to do, uh, I'm going to show you a couple of ways here. Here's one way. We're going to get a common denominator. When two fractions have the same denominator, then they have equal sized parts. So comparing, so we'll compare the number of parts. So, so back when we did the folding the paper, there were 15 equal sized parts for those denominators right there. All right, so uh, right here, uh, if you can see that uh, 8 is a multiple of 4, so if I take this 1 fourth and multiply it by 2 over 2, it's going to get me 1 times 2 over 4 times 2, which is 2 eighths. So now I'm just comparing uh, 3 eighths with 2 eighths. So if I had, you know, like a piece of paper and I folded it up 8 equal spots right there and I shaded in 3 of them for 3 eighths, here I shaded in 2 for 2 eighths, definitely 3 eighths is bigger than 2 eighths, okay? Uh, let's see, another way is when two fractions have the same numerator, they represent the same number of parts. So then you can compare the size of the parts. So uh, let's compare 3 eighths and 1 fourth by getting common numerators, you guys. So can you see that 3 is a multiple of 1? So looking at 3 and 1, a common multiple is 3. So if I multiply this fraction here this time by 3 over 3, you guys, it's going to get me 3 over 12. Okay, so this tells me how many parts. So if you can, sh uh, um, uh, not shade, if you can fold a piece of paper up into 8 equal parts and fold another piece of paper up into 12 equal parts and then shade 3 of them on both of them. See, here's 8 equal parts with 3 of them being shaded. Here's 12 equal parts with 3 of them being shaded. And I can easily see that this side is bigger than this side right here. So definitely uh, 3 eighths is bigger than 3 twelfths. And since 3 twelfths equals 1 fourth, 3 eighths is bigger than 1 fourth. So depending on which way you did it, whether you got common denominators right here, and then you, uh, you just looked at the numerators right here, uh, or if you get common numerators over here, and then you look at um, uh, how many pieces they have right there, uh, I, in both cases, I can see that uh, 3 eighths is bigger than 1 fourth and 3 eighths is bigger than 1 fourth. So let's answer the question. Were there more contests on the blacktop or in the field? Okay, so there were definitely more contests on the blacktop because 3 eighths of them were on the blacktop. All right? All right, so let's compare some fractions and explain your reasonings right here, okay? So, so here, um, on this one right here, 5 6 and 1 third, what I'm going to do is, is use the benchmark uh, lesson that we taught in the last lesson, the benchmark of a half, you guys. And since 5 6 is bigger than a half, because 3 6 would be a half, and 1 third is, you know, if I'm talking about third size pieces versus half size pieces, a third is less than a half, you guys. So by comparing each fraction, 5 6 is greater uh, uh, than 1 half, uh, and, um, uh, and 1 third is less than a half. Sorry, a little tongue twisted right there. So 5 6 has to be greater than 1 half right there. Okay? 
All right, so 5 6 is bigger than a half, 1 3rd is less than a half, so 5 6 has to be bigger than, than 1 3rd. Okay, over here, since I have, uh, um, uh, have the same numerators already, then I just got to look at the denominators, you guys. So they represent the same number of parts. When you have the numerators, they represent the same number of parts. So the denominators tells you the size of the parts. Fifth size parts are, diff are bigger than seventh size parts. Think of a rectangle and you divide it up into five equal pieces versus a rectangle you divide it up into seven equal pieces. Uh, the five equal pieces would be bigger on the fifth size parts than the seventh size parts. So four fifths is bigger than four sevenths. Okay? All right, so let's try a couple more, you guys. Okay, here, what I'm going to do here is get a common denominator right here, 5 eighths and 3 fourths. If I take this 3 fourths and multiply it by 2 over 2, it's going to get me uh, 6 over 8 right there. So if we get common denominators, I get 6 eighths, and then I compare uh, the number of equal size parts, okay? Not the number of parts, the number of equal size parts. Since 5 eighths is parts is less than 6 eighths parts, then 5 eighths is less than 6 eighths, which is equal to 3 fourths. So 5 eighths is, is, uh, is less than uh, 3 fourths right there. Okay, on this one here, you guys, I don't want to get common denominators. I'm going to get common numerators because uh, 6 is a multiple of 3. So I'm going to multiply this one by 2 over 2. And then, uh, and then so when I do that, I get 6 over uh, 10. So I'm going to compare 6 over 7 with 6 over 10. When you compare the numerators, uh, since the numerators are equal, then we compare the size of the parts. And since 7th uh, size parts is greater than 10th size parts, then 6 7 is going to be greater than uh, 6 tenths, okay? So, which is equal to 3 fifths. So, 6 7 is definitely bigger than 3 fifths, okay? So, there's a few ways. Do the benchmark. You can get common... Um, you can get common denominators. And when you get common denominators, you look at the numerators. And then uh, when you get common numerators, you look at the denominators. And so, okay. So, uh, what would you use to compare 11 twelfths and 5 6? So, uh, would you compare the numerators or the denominators? Okay, well, see, the numerators, a common multiple between 11 and 5 is 55. I don't want to deal with that. But a common multiple between 12 and 6 is 12. So I'd get common denominators on this one, you guys. So then you can, uh, they both have 12 size parts, and we can count the number of equal size parts on those. Okay? Uh, can you use simplest form of 6 tenths uh, to compare, sorry, to compare 6 tenths and 2 fifths? Okay, so simplest forms means can you reduce these guys? So, so if I can reduce these guys right here, um, uh, these can both be reduced by, by 2. So um, 6 tenths uh, can be written in simplest form as 3 fifths because 6 divided by 2 is, is 3 and 10 divided by 2 is 5. So you can compare 2 fifths and 3 fifths by comparing uh, uh, the numerators. Once you have common denominators, then you compare the numerators right there. All right, you guys, I hope that helps you guys, and we'll see you in the next lesson. Take care.